TV season, there were two November to premiere. And waiting until November to premiere is what happened with Helms. The second is that because of this big baseball gap they have in the schedule, and the fact that American Idol, the biggest show on TV, returned in January every year, the Fox schedule for fall was always very much a placeholder. So when I talk about Test for Housewives, that was a show that aired in the same time slot, following the same show for most of its entire run. House, I think I counted, aired in seven different time slots, at least one episode of the show. And because of that, when I'm going to break down the ratings of it, for the first two seasons, I'm going to break the show in half. From before it's airing with American Idol to after it's airing with American Idol, because it really is needed to tell the whole story. So when House premieres, the average rating for a show is around a four, okay? And the advertisers target adults 18 through 49 demographics. That's what the average rating is. So just to keep that in mind when we're going in. Now, by the time the house is coming to a close, the average ratings are under 2.4. There's been about a 40% decline in live ratings due to the rise of competition on cable, uh, TiVo and DVR, and by the end, a little bit of streaming. Um, So house is a show that was doing some similar ratings in the early season one and in season eight. And they're much more impressive in season eight because of just the collective decline of getting people to watch a show live. So House premieres really late in the season in November. Okay, so much so that it's going to air episodes all the way through the Christmas season. So in season one A, its section high is a 2.9, its section low is a 2.5, and its average is a 2.64. All right, so it premieres a bit below that 2.9, but it stays in a really close range here. And again, the average show is doing about a 4 at this time. So this is a below average show. But also, Fox did no favors for it. It started late in November, aired in December, in its lead-in was a show called Rebel Millionaire, or Billionaire, um, which was a much bigger flop. Uh, it's playing into the ones, White House is playing into the twos. There's no real show, sign of promise outside of that. But Fox decides after season 1A that for season 1B, it's going to air after American Idol. And American Idol is just the biggest show on TV into a a crazy amount. Um, And it's going to be on three times what the average show is doing. So it's airing right after American Idol. And when 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 it shows up after American Idol, it does a five, which is way better than anything it'd ever done before. Everything else was in the twos. But this wasn't actually that good because American Idol was playing into the double digits. But across the period of time, as American Idol slowly declined from the audition phase to the live performance phase, House was starting to go up a bit. So this was a real feast or famine thing. The first part of House was averaging a 264 out of a lead-in that was around a 1.8. The second half of the season averaged around a 6.5 out of a average lead-in of a 12. So it's just a, a drastic difference that occurred. But it finishes with a series high 7.7. So it seems to be having some momentum. So Fox goes and they get it to air in the fall again and it is airing at nine o'clock uh after a show that doesn't succeed and if you just compare season 2a to season 1a you see a world of difference it's high in section 
at in season 2A is a 5.9, over double the high from season 1. Section The section low is a 4.9, almost double. Okay, the season average for the section is 5.29. That is a little over 100% growth. And it does have a less inept lead-in um, but um, than Rebel Billionaire, but that's still pretty clearly a lot of growth on its own. The exposure after American Idol has been helping it. So then it goes after American Idol again after that the shift in the spring. Now, Fox is going to air it a couple other times at seemingly random slots. Like, they're like, let's randomly air it on Monday or Wednesday. And those are both not with, without American Idol and just kind of random, hard to keep up with. But during this, the section high is a 10.2, which its previous high was a 7.7. .7. So that is a big increase. Right? Um, even in that random one-off airing on Wednesday, there's a 5.3. That's above what it had done for its first American Idol episode ever in season one. So section average is an 8.5. That is up 31% from when it had aired after American Idol in season one even though the American Idol lead-in was only about 7% increase. So it looks like House is legitimately becoming a stronger show, though obviously a, a much stronger show when it's airing after the biggest show on TV. So, season three for Section 3A in the fall. They have a bit of a weird scheduling here. For the first three weeks, it airs at 8 o'clock, then it went on a hiatus, because of baseball, and then it returned, and it was airing at 9. So we don't actually know what its lead-in was when it was airing after local programming. But section high, 7.2, up 22% from the section high last fall. Section low, 5.8, up 18%. The section average is up is 6.45, that's up 22%. Right? So up about 20% from the previous fall, that, that itself was up about 100% from the one before it. So even without American Idol, it's going to the point where it's a legitimate hit all on its own. Right. Um, then for Section 3B, its section high is an 11.2, up 10% from the previous spring. A section low is a 6.7. That is an episode that airs without American Idol as a lead-in. And even without American Idol's lead-in, it's doing better on these one-off airings. So its section average is a 9.21. That's up 8%. Even while its average lead-in is down 13%. American Idol is coming down a bit from its height. So House at this point is one of the highest rated scripted shows on television. And yes, it has American Idol as a lead-in. But those are very potent combo. All right, the last season I'm going to break up here by sections is season four. Now this is in 2007, 2008, so it's the writer strike. So before the season started, Fox announced that House was going to be the show that got to air after the Super Bowl, which is a great setup. However, the writer strike happened, and when the writer strike occurs, they have three episodes banked. Right. So it get a bit of a weird, awkward airing, and we'll get into this. So for section 4A in the fall, the section high is a 7.8. The section low is a 7. The section average is a 7.28. So you can see every episode is above a 7. All of these up from the comparable things the past fall. That's three falls of growth. It does have a better lead in this time but it really doesn't look like that's what's pushing it. Then we come to the awkward scheduling because they only have three episodes. So they air an episode after American Idol on a Tuesday. Then they air an episode after the Super Bowl on a Sunday. And then they air an episode after American Idol on a Tuesday. And then it has to go on a break because they're out of episodes. So this is a show where could it get the Super Bowl boost? We'll never know because it didn't really get a chance. So that section high is a 12.9. That is what it did after the Super Bowl. 
Then it returns after three months off or two and a half um, to air a few more episodes and it airs away from American Idol. It airs with Bones. Um, and it gets as low as a 7.1. See, there's a decline. So the section average is a 7.6. It's down 18%. Its average lead-in is also down 22% because it only aired two episodes after American Idol. However, it also aired one episode after the Super Bowl post-game show. So there's a lot of things going on there. But you can see this is kind of the start of the decline. It's really unfair for the show because of the writer's strike. Um, so for the rest of this, I'm going to just talk about the season as a whole. Because even though Fox did sometimes move it around, it's not going to air after American Idol anymore. So you have season five. It's season premieres at 5.6. That is down 28% from the last season premiere, which was also in the fall without American Idol. Okay. It's season high is a six. That's down 53% from the one after the Super Bowl. But that's still, even if you throw that one out, that's 40% below. It's high otherwise. Its season low is a 4.5. That's down 12% because it's being compared to some of those after-strike episodes. But as a season average, it's down 5. It's 5.21. It's down 26%. So we always knew that, that like, this is a show that had been four years ago doing the in the twos. So it's still in the four, five, sixes. Um, but without American Idol, with its new scheduling pattern after the strike, it takes a decline. Then, they come up with a good gimmick for season six. They have a two-hour premiere at which Dr. House has checked himself into a mental hospital. Okay. Um, and it's basically just Hugh Laurie from the main cast during this. This is a really a gimmick. It premieres to a 6.7. That is up 20%. Okay, now that is the season high. It can't keep up with that. Um, but that's still be above anything it did the previous season. But it starts struggling in the spring. It's all the way down to the threes. That season low is down 20%. So it just kind of comes out of the wash. Its season average is down 7%, which is about what every like collective entertainment programming was like eight percent that year so that was around the same however you can see how the gimmick played out season seven the season premiered is a 4.2 that is down 37 percent from their gimmick episode that will remain the season high and in the spring it actually gets all the way to fall below a 3 to a 2.9, which is the lowest rating it's had since season 1. So, its season average is a 3.58. It's down 26%. That is a worrying amount. The thing to think about, though, is that its first section ever averaged a 2.64. So... In that thing, it's six years later, it's still doing better than it did at the beginning of its run while everything else is down, you know, 30, 35%. So they go into season eight. And season eight has a bit of a weird scheduling to it because it airs at nine o'clock on Mondays after Terra Nova. Then in the winter, they have it air at eight o'clock on Mondays into a new show called Alcatraz, and then they move it back to 9 o'clock to air after Bones for the end of its run. So it does do a bit of a movement here. And when it returns for season 9, it does a 3.9. It's growing out of its lead-in from Terra Nova. That's down only 7%, so that looks like... And they haven't made an announcement that this is the final season yet. That's just speculation. So, if it was only down 7%, Fox would have been like, yes, give us season 9, give us season 10, we will pay it. But that's season high, and it just keeps on declining from there. And it's really painful because it gets, still in the winter, it gets all the way up into the threes, 
but it just keeps on dropping and dropping. And near the very end, it falls below a two. And so finally it's doing ratings, raw ratings worse than it did in season one. And so when it gets season low of a 1.9, it's dropping out of bones as a lead in. It's down 34% from the previous season low. It's a below average rated show. So they announced in February that this was going to be the final one. So for its final episode, they have a recap, like a remembering um, special airing at 8. That does a 2.1, which is above what its season low was. And then it spikes to 2.9. That isn't even a season high. So for its final season, it does a 2.54 down 29%. It finally falls seven years later below its early ratings. And that is why Fox lets it go. It's an expensive show. It's a show that if they lost Hugh Laurie, it would just collapse even more. And so Fox lets it go. And it's hard to argue with them on this when one, two, three, three of the last four seasons of the show were dropping over 25%. Right? And it didn't seem to be lowering this. So to wrap it up, I said, let's just look at the season finales. And there's actually only two season finales of the show that air after American Idol. There's season one, where it hits its highest rating ever at the time, after American Idol, 7.7. Season two gets to air after the American Idol finale. It does a 10.2. Season three actually airs uh, after a week break because to make room for the American Idol finale. It does a 6.7. And, you know, that is below the season one. Um, um, and way below season two, season four does a 5.8, season five does a 4.7, season six does a 4.3. All right, all close to double digit declines. Season seven does a 3.4, and season eight, and an announced series finale that was given a recap special from the whole program. As I say, it can only pull off a 2.9. It really just upset its audience at the very end. Okay. Now, one thing that House can say that most shows can't is that when it premiered in November of 2004, it premiered to a 2.7. When it left, it left with a 2.9. Most shows can't say that, that they ended larger than they began. But you see the trends, and you see why Fox thought, this is an expensive show. We're going to try something else. And, you know, several people involved in the show creatively and as actors have gone to be successful elsewhere with their shows as well. So, um, House is something that my dad watched regularly, so I was familiar with large elements of it. I would never like a specific viewer myself, though. So, I know there was cast turnover, especially by, um, by the final season. So, if you know more about this and you have some inclinations about why there might have been some of these declines this time, why it was gaining momentum with the first four seasons, okay, t tell me in the comments, uh, and I, I hope you liked it.